Oh hi, fancy seeing you guys here. Today you join me back here in Norxia National Park. I've only been here once before and that was a long time ago now with Ronnie. Maybe some of you guys remember that video. But I've come back today for a bit of a solo adventure. Right now I am following the, the blue markers uh, on the Haukan Kieros and I totally forgot that there's a, a big old hill here which I have to climb. And today is kind of really the first cold day. Well, let's say the first chilly day. Maybe you can see that there's starting to be some frost on the ground, which makes me extra happy that this video is sponsored by Revolution Race. Now, Revolution Race are having a Black Friday sale, which is going on right now. They have a bunch of items on sale, so if you've been watching these videos of uh, the Revolution Race sponsors, and you'd be like, hmm, maybe one day I'll get something. Now's really the time. So you can head on over to revolutionrace.fi and yeah, check out the sale. There'll be a link in the description as well if you don't fancy doing all that typing. So Revolution Race have sent me some pieces which are perfect for that autumn, winter kind of transfer. First of all, this outer layer, which is the mongoose jacket. I found that this jacket so far has been great during the autumn. These kind of chilly days where you don't need too much on, but you just definitely need a little something on the outside. Now this jacket is water resistant and it has a bunch of pockets. So it's really, really great for both these outdoor activities where you just need to put a pair of gloves like I have in my little hand pockets here. And I've of course been wearing it in Helsinki where we live and I think it's a really stylish little model so great for urban adventures as well. And underneath the jacket we have the slacker hoodie. Now I have a, a little bit of a, a confession to make. When I first got the hoodie and the pants like the combo I didn't take them off for for many days. They're just so comfy and I think they look awesome as well. Uh, I've never had like a, a matching thing before and I, I like it a lot. But anyway, yeah, I, I was so comfortable in them. I didn't take them off for many, many days. And Kat, my wife, was like, Dave, I think it's about time you took them off and put them in the wash. But as I say, the slacker hoodie, and this is in the olive color. This is really warm and cozy, so really great for just chilling at home and also for going out into the town. And of course, like I'm using it today as just like a, another layer. It has that traditional hand pocket in the front and a nice big, hood. I hate hoodies with small hoods. This has the perfect size hood. Also I've found with the, all the Revolution Race stuff that the sleeves are the perfect length. That is a massive pet peeve of mine with clothes that you put something on and the sleeves come halfway up your arm. Especially for a tall guy like me that can be a problem sometimes. But it seems that Revolution Race have the size and the sleeve length just right. And as I mentioned before, the slacker pants, these are just like the hoodie, great for chilling at home or going out on an adventure, whatever you want to do as long as you want to stay cozy and warm. These also have hand pockets and two side pockets, one on each leg. One has a zip and one has a button, so you can keep your keys or phone in your zip pocket and whatever you need access to in the, in the one with the, the button, the popper. And I have to say, it's like a full combination. I'm pretty cozy right now. And while you're having a look at all the stuff that's in the sale, check out the product page. This is again something that I really appreciate about Revolution Race. They give ratings for their products. For example, breathability, uh, what temperature it's suitable to be out in. For example, the mongoose jacket, uh, they rate from between zero and minus 10 degrees. And yeah, they just have a bunch of helpful information on the product page to kind of help you make your decision if you're not sure about one thing or the other. And you've got all the info there for you. You can head on over to revolutionrace.fi or click the link in the description. And yeah, enjoy the sale. There is an activity which I want to do that I haven't done ever before and that is geocaching. So geocaching is basically people put little boxes or tubs or some kind of container in uh, nature and your job is to find it. And inside these containers can be a variety of things apparently. It can be little coins or toys or anything really I think as long as it fits in this box. Anything as long as it's not dangerous or like inappropriate. And so I wanted to try and find one or maybe more of these geocache boxes. Now actually I've walked past one which I was going to try and, and get to but uh, where are we? We're here where this blue dot is and there is one up here by this little point by the lake. So I think we are going to head on up here. I don't think it's that far and see if we can find this geocache. Okay we are not very far into this hike and already I have gone off the trail. <laughs> Although this kind of looks like a trail just like not an official one, if you know what I mean. So this blue line is the trail I thought we were going to take. But as you can see here, it goes way out here. And the geocache is somewhere, somewhere here. 
So we're kind of cutting across here and we'll meet back up with the trail in a minute. At least that's the plan. This is good. Yeah, I guess we can try to get down here. The only problem with going down is usually you have to go back up. Once we get up here, it's going to be pretty close, I think. <laughs> okay, this is cool. Wow. Man, the way the light is hitting the top of the trees over there. Oh, this is beautiful. All right, so we've seen the view. Apparently this is one of the views of Norkzeal. So nice to have seen that, but we still need to find the geocache. And if you can see there, the geocache should be really close to the, the viewpoint. Now you get told where roughly it is, but you still have to find it. And it can be pretty hidden from what I understand. The cache is placed to a scenic spot in the northwestern corner of Lake Haukalumpi should be approached from Hawks Run walking route. Okay, the container is a half liter Tupperware. I don't know if it's on the ground or like stuck to a tree. Also, I don't know how far down. Ow. That sucked. Okay. Well, Hawks Head Geocache, I did not find. But there is one more, kind of on the way to where I wanna make some lunch. That was a little bit disappointing, I'm not gonna lie. If there are any geocacher folk that watched this video, and you found that one, bruh, okay, almost lost my eye. Yeah, if you found that one before, let me know where I'm going wrong. Anyway, I'm gonna try and find another one. Okay. I think I'm gonna take a little break, see if I can make some food. It looks like a good place. Now I am realizing that I left my knife at home. I didn't bring a lighter, so. What I do have is this thing, which if you've seen any of my recent videos will know, I'm not very good at. sausage anyone? But I guess with that failure I can tell you about another failure that I had recently. So this video was originally supposed to be a trip to see the Northern Lights because when I get a sponsor like Revolution Race has sponsored this video I usually like to try and spend a little bit of that extra budget that I have from the sponsor on making a really nice video. And so I was keeping an eye on the Aurora forecast and one day it was a really really high chance to see Auroras in Ole. So literally the night before 11 o'clock at night, I booked a train to go to Oulu. I'd also booked a hotel and I'd researched where I would, I would go and you know, all that kind of stuff. All within the space of a, a few hours, literally 11 o'clock at night, next day I was gonna be in Oulu. So I made the six hour train journey. I was all ready to, you know, get this video cracking. And at 5 p.m. was supposed to be, you know, peak time. 5 p.m. came along, I was standing on the beach by this like lighthouse and it was the windiest day ever. Like so windy to the point where you can barely stand up. Okay, I have made it to my destination. Probably, as you can hear, uh, it's, quite, it's quite windy. Windy, 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 really chilly. Couldn't see anything. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll just maybe I'm not in the right spot or, you know, maybe, I don't know, something else. I check my app, refresh, 0% chance. <sighs> but I waited and, you know, I tried to stick it out as long as I could, but it was very cold, very windy and I was getting pretty miserable. <laughs> but uh, long story short, I didn't see any Northern Lights. I didn't see Aurora Borealis, and I spent about 400 euros to get cold. But I guess the moral of this story is, you need more than one day to see the Northern Lights. Uh, I don't know if Oulu is the best place to see them. Yeah, don't be so spontaneous, I guess. Although it was quite fun. <laughs> Light is starting to go. It's, uh, I don't even know what time it is. About three o'clock, 3.30, something like that. I really want to find this cache and then I have to go home because it'll be dark. 
So I was just walking along here where I was looking before and I looked up and the GPS says it should be up here. And I think, can you guys see on that tree? It looks as though there's some kind of box. I don't know if it's a bird box or if it's the cache. I think I'm gonna have to go up and have a look. I think I might have just found it, guys. First, I've got to climb up here. Ooh, 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 I think I found it. <laughs> okay, that's not it. Damn it. <laughs> According to this, I am very, very close between eight and three meters, it keeps saying. Oh my God. Yes. Now I'm not gonna show exactly where it is because I don't want to spoil it for anybody else. Also, I'm not going to show what's inside. Maybe one or two things, let's see. So inside is an all-weather notebook, which I will sign. Mmm, smells musty. There's also one of these trackables, which uh, you can take and put in another one, I think. The bears on a world trip. I would like to travel all around the world and visit as much places as possible. Do not hesitate to take pictures of it. Well, there we go, you're traveling bears. I'm not going to take it though, because I don't know the next time I'll see or get to one of these caches. There's all kinds of bits and bobs in here. This was put here, at least the notebook was here from 2020. So this has been here a couple of years. All kinds of people have stopped by. This is so cool. Okay, oh no, pen. There's another pen. Yes, we did it. Okay, so this is a dragon themed cache and I just happened to bring along some uh, English coins. I thought this was a pretty cool thing to leave in the box because firstly it has the queen on it who is sadly no longer with us so it might be pretty cool for any kids that come along the parents can say a little bit of the history but as this is a dragon themed box on the back of these kind of liony dragony things so that's pretty cool there's another coin in here what's that oh it's a five cent i think my my coin's a bit better so into the box goes my coin that was sneaky i have to say very much more covered up than I thought it was going to be. Ah. I, I feel like I needed that. I needed a win because I failed in Olu. I failed to find that first cache. I failed to start fire with my broken little thing, but we got a win. We got a win. I'm glad I just didn't think, oh, someone's ruined the cache and, you know, it's become an old broken bird box. Oh yeah, needed that. I think these geocaches could be actually a really good way to get kids out into nature. I mean, it's fun already just kind of going around, but to have like a, a goal, like to find something, I think it's kind of fun. Guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you again soon. See ya.